Okay, hi class. Sorry I'm not here today. So here's what you are going to be working on, okay? Is before you watch this video, you have to do the warm-up that I posted a Google slide to in that Google post, okay? So if you haven't done that already, make sure you do that, um, and then I'll go through the answers tomorrow, okay? Um, the second thing on the list is that you have to fill out these notes, so by watching this video, make sure you watch it all the way through and while filling out your note sheet, okay? And then the third thing is going to be the 4.3 homework worksheet that will be due tomorrow. I am going to be checking all three things, so I'm going to be checking the warm-up, the note sheet, and also the, um, the homework for that too, okay? So really quick, let's talk about this, okay? What we're gonna be doing today is we are gonna be talking about how to determine whether or not a triangle is congruent, um, and then specifically today, we are gonna be using the method CPCTC, um, so I'll be talking about that uh, more in depth today, okay? So here's what I'm going to start off with is what does it mean to be a congruent triangle or to have congruent triangles? So when we're talking about congruent triangles, uh, congruent triangles have the same size, okay, and the same shape, okay? So they're both a triangle and they both have the same size. That means they are congruent, okay? What this means for the angles and the sides is that the sides and angles are going to be congruent to each other, okay? And because of this, we can assume that when we have a congruency statement, there's certain, like, angles that align with one another and then certain sides that align with each other, okay? So this comes on to the idea of what CPCTC stands for, okay? So this is what the acronym stands for. It stands for this, okay? You're going to start off with congruent parts, okay? that's CP, okay, of congruent triangles, okay, that's CT, okay, are congruent, okay. So we can say that congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, okay. This hints on the idea that we're talking about the angles and the sides, okay. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is how can we determine which angles are congruent to each other and then which sides are congruent to each other, okay? What we're going to do is what we're going to be calling this is we're going to talk about how to write a congruency statement and then how to give out, get out certain words out of that, okay? Okay, so when we're writing congruency statements, this is what we're talking about. It says when triangles are congruent, we can write a congruency statement. Here's the biggest thing with the congruency statement, okay? Below is an example of one. You have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. What ends up happening is that the angles and the sides, okay, align to each other. So in other words, like if we're looking at the angles, let's look at the picture, okay? We can see on the picture that angle A and angle D are congruent to each other. So if you notice in the congruency statement, A is the first letter, D is the first letter, okay? Let's look at the other ones. So then we can see, okay, there's two arcs on B and two arcs on E. So we can say that B is congruent to E, okay? And then finally three congruency markings on C, three congruency markings on F, and so C and F. So in this case, okay, biggest thing is order matters, okay? If you do not have it in the correct order, you can't align them like that, okay? So we're just going to practice this using both the congruency statement and then writing the sides out and the um, angles out. Okay, so here's what it says. It says list all the congruency angles and sides given the congruency statement, okay? So you, what you're going to start off with is looking at this statement, okay? I'm going to go by the angles first, okay? So when you're talking about the angles, you're going to go first letter to first letter, second letter to second letter, third letter to third letter, okay? So what it would be is starting off with angle J, okay? You want to make sure you have that angle marking, okay? 
you're going to use the congruency symbol. So it's congruent to the first letter of the second word. So angle P. Okay. You're just going to keep doing that with the other two letters. So it's going to be angle K is congruent to angle Q. Okay. And then finally angle L is congruent to angle R. And that's all the angles. Okay. So remember, for angles, you only need one letter, okay? For sides, you need two letters, okay? So here's how we're going to do the sides, okay? What I'm going to start off with is I'm just going to start with the first two letters of the first word, okay? So J, K, okay? From there, I'm going to write the congruency symbol, okay? And then I'm going to go to the first two letters of that second uh, phrase, which is P, Q, so I can say JK is congruent to PQ, and since these are line segments, make sure you have a line above, okay? I'm going to keep following that pattern. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first one, and I'm going to say start with K, second letter, and the third letter is L, okay? You have to go in that order, okay? You're going to follow the same pattern from that second phrase, so second letter Q, and third letter R, so QR is congruent to KL. And then finally, there's one other. You can go first to last letter, first to last letter, okay? So it'd be JL is congruent to uh, PR, okay? And that would be it, okay? So that's how you kind of break it apart with each part, okay? So another uh, example I can ask is write another valid congruency statement. All it means is it means write the one above in a different letter order, okay? So this is what I mean. Let's say I start with the second letter, like K, okay? Then jump to the third letter, L, and then jump to the first letter, J, okay? What I'm going to do then is I'm going to have that congruency marking. I'm going to go in the same pattern as I did before. So second letter, Q, third letter, R, and first letter, P, okay? This is just one option. Okay, there's others. You just have to make sure you're aligning the um, letters, okay? All right, uh, for number two, okay? Um, if you want to try this one out, pause it, okay? Otherwise, just follow along, okay? So for the angles, you're aligning first letter to first letter, second letter to second letter, third letter to third letter, okay? So starting off with angle W, that's going to be congruent to angle E. Then second letter, angle X, is congruent to angle F, and then finally, angle Y is congruent to angle G, okay? For the sides, you need two letters. So I always recommend going in the same order. Start with the first two letters, align to the first two letters, okay? So you would have EF, okay? Then I would do second to third letter, so X to Y, is congruent from F to G, okay? And then finally, uh, first letter to last letter, so W, Y is congruent to E, G, okay? okay? And then you're just writing another valid congruency statement. So let's say I started off with, um, you can pick a letter here. It doesn't matter that first one, you just may, need to make sure you're aligning correct, okay? So like, let's say I start with Y, then go to X, then go to W, okay? That's gonna be congruent to, starting now with the last letter, G, going to F, going to E. You have to follow that order, okay? So, just one option, okay? All right, so for the next one, I'm gonna give you the congruency statement and you're just gonna fill in the rest of the parts, okay? So it says, I always use the congruency statement. The picture, in this case, actually for once, it doesn't help me out much because there's no, like, congruency markings on it, okay? So here's what we're gonna do is, you're gonna look at kind of what order the letters are in. So the first one says KM. Up here in this one, K is the first letter, M is the second letter. You're gonna go in the same direction. So A would be the first letter, and then C would be the last letter, okay? And you're just gonna do that for all these other ones, okay? So for the next one, C is the last letter, Y is the second to last letter, you have to go in the same order. So in the first one, M is the last letter, and then P is the second to last, okay? 
you can't go PM, otherwise it's gonna be off. Yeah. All right, so for PK, P is the second letter, K is the first letter. So in this one, it would be the second letter Y and the first letter A. All right, so for the angles next, okay? For Y, that's the second letter, so you wanna align to the second letter, which would be P, okay? For K, that would be the first letter, so the first letter of that congruency statement is A, okay? Now, one thing to note is that you can label angles with three letters, okay? If you label it with three letters, you have to label the other one with three letters as well, okay? So for A, C, Y, okay? It would go from A to C to Y, so first to third to second, you're gonna follow that same pattern. K to M, back to P. So it would be uh, angle K, M, P, okay? There is no way to do this other than with three letters, okay? All right, and the last two are just rearranging. So M, P, K. So if you notice, M is the last letter, P is the second to last letter, K is the first letter, you're just reversing it. So it would be triangle symbol, you start with C, Y, A, okay. And then finally from there, Y, A, C. So Y would be the second letter, A is the first letter, and P C is the third letter. You have to go in the same order. So second letter, P, first letter, K, and last letter, M. Okay. There's no other options for these. Okay, you have to get them in the correct order. Okay, so obviously we could play with letters all day long, but obviously this is math, so we want to make sure we're integrating some numbers into this, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use a congruency statement to then solve for uh, measurements, okay? So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to, like, label my parts that are congruent to each other, okay? So first off, okay, we already have GH and XY labeled with those congruency, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, this should be this, okay? So GH and XY, those are congruent to one another, so I'm gonna label those with one tick mark, okay? All right, the next one is gonna be, uh, like, if I was looking at HJ, it's congruent to YZ, okay? So HJ, again, has one tick mark, so YZ is gonna have one tick mark, okay? That just means all four of them are congruent, which is fine, okay? It's just gonna be a repeat. And then finally, okay, it says if we're looking at GJ, okay, GJ is congruent to XZ. So I'm actually going to label that with two tick marks since I don't know the relationship between the two legs and the two bases, okay? All right, so now from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find the certain parts I have, okay? What I'm going to start off with is GJ, okay? GJ is this line down here. Okay, I'm looking for where else the two tick marks appear, which is up here. So I know that XZ and GJ are congruent to each other, so that is 18 feet as well. Okay, so there's not a ton of math in this. It's just figuring out which part is which. Okay, all right, for XY, XY is this line segment over here. I'm looking for where else there's one tick mark with an ang or a measurement. And I can see over here, 27 has one tick mark. So this over here would be 27, okay? I'm going to be strict with this. Make sure you have labels, okay? Um, for the next one, ZY, well, looking at ZY, that has one tick mark, so it's also going to be 27 feet, okay? Nothing changes about it, okay? So that's for the line segments, okay? We're now going to look at the angles. Okay, so here's what I'm going to start out with. The measurement of angle H, okay? Angle H, I need to figure out what it aligns to. So angle H, if I'm looking, has the second letter here. It aligns to the second letter over here. So if I look at Y, I can see that this is 38. H is the same amount. So it's going to be 38 degrees. Okay. All right, the other two I need to figure out are angle Z and angle X. Okay, if you notice, okay, I'm going to erase my markings. You can see that these two have two congruency markings, which means they're equal. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this overall triangle. You can use what you've done before. 
all angles add up to 180 degrees in a triangle, and I have 1 is 38, and then it's split evenly. So how I'm going to figure out these two is actually by doing this. I'm going to do 180 minus that vertex angle, so what we did on Monday with uh, isosceles triangles. Okay, and so what you would get is you would get, let me do that really quick, 142. Okay, and then you have to split it evenly amongst two, so then I'm just going to divide that by two. And so you get 71 degrees for both. Okay, so that one's a little tricky, but you can use what you've done before. Okay. If I don't point you here, like, falling behind on the writing, just pause it, the video. Okay. Okay, so the last two are going to be your algebra problems. Okay, so we're going to have to solve for X, Y, and Z in each one of these. Okay, so here's what I'm going to start off with. Even before I set up an equation, I'm just going to start by labeling which parts are congruent. Since these are all labeled by sides, I'm going to label like, the sides that are congruent to each other. Okay, so here's what I'm going to start with. UV is congruent to TS. So UV and TS are congruent to one another. I label that with one tick mark. Now do the same for the other two sides, okay? So I'm going to go second layer to last letter, second layer to last letter. So it'd be here, okay? And then here. I'm going to label that two tick marks since I don't want to indicate all the sides are not equal, okay? And then finally, this one's the last one, okay? U to W and then T to S, those are congruent. So I'm going to do three tick marks, okay? So what I'm going to do is if I'm solving for x, y, and z, I'm going to set up three equations with each, okay? All right, so let's do this. Starting off with x, I can see that 12x minus 7 and 53 have two congruent parts. So in other words, how I'm going to solve for x is I'm just going to set them equal. 12x minus 7 equals 53, okay? If you don't have the congruency markings, you'll never be able to set these problems up. Okay? So then just solving for x, add 7 to both sides, you get 60. And then divide by 12, you get x is 5. Okay? So that's the first one. Okay? You're going to do the same thing for y and z. Okay? So where where is y located? It's located here, 5y minus 33. I'm looking for where else there are two tick marks. That's at 57. So in other words, these two parts, 5y minus 33 and 57 are congruent. Okay. And then just solving for that, you would add 33. So it would be 5y equals, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 90. Okay. And then finally divide 90 uh, by... 5, you would get 18. Okay. okay, and the last one, the three tick marks. You can see that 3z plus 14 and then 50 have three tick marks aligned to it. So it would be 3z plus 14 equals 50. Okay. And so when I do that, I would get 3z equals uh, 36, and then divide by 3, you get z is 12. Okay, and so that's what I'm asking for, so I'm asking you to solve for x, y, and z. All three of those are your answer. Okay. Okay, last problem, okay? So for this one, now it's dealing with the angles, okay? So again, we're going to align the angles to each other, okay? So what I'm going to start off with is... P and C are congruent to each other, so I'll label those with one arc and um, one arc here. Okay, if you are not labeling these congruency markings, you're never going to get this set up right. Okay, then for H, I'm going to do H and N are congruent. I'm going to use two arcs there, and then finally for uh, the last one, it would be here and here. Okay. Okay. So here's what I'm going to start off with, okay? Is if I'm looking to find the value of x, I'm looking for where x is located. x is located here, so I'm going to do 6x minus 29 
is equal to 2 um, arcs 115. Okay, and solve for x. So adding 29 to both sides, you would get 6x equals, uh, let me do that really quick, 144. And then finally divide by 6, you would get x is 24. Okay, that's the first one. The next one is going to be y, okay? So if you notice, y is located here at 3y with minus 1 with 3 arcs. If you guys notice, the problem with that is that I don't have any, like, angle labeling for s. But here's what I know. I know the value of x, okay? Let's see if I can find the value of h and then see what I can do from there. So if I'm looking just to find the value of this, I would do 6 times 24 minus 29. Okay, there is a reason for this. You'll see in a second. So 24 times 6, okay, minus 29. That's going to be 115 degrees right down here. Look what I have. I have 2, and I have to find the third angle in a triangle. To find the measurement of angle S, this is side work, you do 180 minus the two angles given to me, 115 and 36. So it is a puzzle piece. You do need to figure out the certain parts before you set up your equation. Okay, so it'd be 180 minus 115 minus 36. And so you would get S is equal to 29. So now that I know that is 29, I know that 29 and 3Y minus 1, those two parts are going to be equal to each other. So to solve for Y, I would do 3Y minus 1 equals 29. Okay, and then just solve for y from there. Okay, so it would be plus 1, 3y equals 30. And then finally divide by 3, you get y is 10. Okay, so that's for that. Okay, and then finally for z, well, z is located at 1 arc here. So I'm looking for where else there's 1 arc. It's going to be here at 36. So I set those two equal to one another, 4z minus 32 equals 36, okay, and then just solve. So add 32 first, I get 4z equals eight, uh, 68, okay, and then finally divide by 4, you would get uh, 17 for z, okay. So that one was a little bit trickier one, but it is doable. Okay, cool, guys. So here's what you're going to be working on. Uh, what's due tomorrow is going to be the lesson uh, 4.3 worksheet. Okay. Make sure you have all three things. So make sure you have your notes and also your warm up. Okay. Also, a reminder, if you did not or if you want to retake the test, that's going to be due next Monday. So you need to make sure you're completing the review. Um, but that's pretty much it. So if you guys want to sign up, that's fine. Okay, bye.